kingdom even while you're on earth. That you would have the confidence of the kingdom knowing that you're saved and you're set free. You're free, brother. You, you know, this drug thing and this um, lust thing or whatever it is you're worried about, this is temporary. You know, I guarantee you it will just fall away from you, at least, you know, and you'll be moving on to other aspects of life. But you keep beating it, going through this cycle of beating yourself up, saying you'll never do it again and then doing it again and then feeling guilty and then hiding from God and then running back and confessing and then being good for a while and then slipping again, then hiding from God, then running. Okay, this endless repetition of guilt, shame and beating up and, and torture. The Lord is here to comfort you. And to stop that. Now, others are worried about their physical bodies. I assure you, the Lord knows your pain. He knows your ulcers. He knows your obesity. He knows your um, worry about your own mortality. He knows all that. And he's taken all that into account and said, look... If you can just keep press on a little while, I will restore you completely and there'll never be another thought of anxiety about your age or your, your, your infirmities or, you know, your worries about your pension or how you're going to get through or whether you'll be a burden on your family and all those things. Put all your faith in me, the Lord is saying to you. Put all your faith in me and I will guide you through on all these health issues. Not to worry. Further, let the Lord feed you. Instead of going on the next fad diet, those of you who are, are, are struggle with obesity, and the only reason you're obese is because of the pain that you suffered being a lamb, and 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 you know, and that manifested as trying to find some comfort, some escape, and using food to do it, and it and it made you obese. And uh, the Lord knows your pain. I know, He knows you don't like that. He, he understands, and he understands your need for self-medication, which is all that is, and for protection. In other words, you know, sometimes fat is, you know, is because it's, it's culturally um, anathema, you know, is used to protect you from um, engaging in relationships that would otherwise be extremely harmful to you. You know, um, every time you sleep with somebody... This is um, pretty well common knowledge. You know, a piece of your soul goes with them. You know, you become fragmented, you know, spiritually fragmented. You know, if if, if uh, food was used to keep you on the um, path with Christ, then so be it. You know, if some at the end of your life, what does it matter anyway? You, you trade in, you know, you, the body's gone. It doesn't matter. Your spirit is not obese. Let me explain something to you to make you feel a little better. First of all, your spirit is not obese. Is it? Your spirit is not ugly. You visualize right now your spiritual being. You're a beautiful, beautiful creature of God. An unbelievable, unbelievably beautiful, attractive, eternal. Um, just something that uh, one would want to put their eyes on and never take their eyes off. Person, an actual person that he made. And in that image, in that glorified state, in that state that exists right now in the spirit, that you, you, all you need to do is look at that. And sometimes some of you put, I'm talking to women, yeah, I know, you put your avatars up that, uh, you know, show this like woman in the spirit, a woman in the, and you know, woman warrioress and the kind of, a, you know, fairy tale comic book type of thing. You know, you're seeing what you're identifying with there. The reason you put that as your avatar on, say, Facebook or whatever is because you're seeing that as your true self and not identifying with it. Because, you know, I got news for you, whether you're fat or not, as you get older, the flesh then starts sagging no matter how skinny you are. And, uh, you know, I'm, you, you know, you're just not going to, you know, it, it just is what it is. And you don't, no worries understand that in the spirit you're a beautiful being a beautiful perfect awesome eternally youthful if you like creation that never ages and never is in pain and is always in love and uh is totally fulfilled and extremely uh excited about everything all the time and is uh, completely stoked in every way shape and form and um and god loves to give you that and create that in you 
because then all your energy and your joy just glorifies him all the more. So, you know, one one thing boosts up the other and it's just an ever ascending spiral upward and upward and upward. It's beautiful. It's lovely. It's awesome. You're perfect. You're the ultimate in feminine beauty and in eternal beauty and in, um, you know, uh, in all that identification you do with feminine, you know, versus masculine versus, you know, defining yourself as a woman. All of the highest attributes of that and the highest aspects of beauty of woman are with you right now. And the, the, you don't need to worry about um, anything. And, you know, as you begin to identify with that more and less with your um, uh, care about yourself, whatever that means, because there is no real such thing. But the more you identify with that, the more the true beauty within you will start radiating out of you. And that's all people are going to see, you know, and they're going to see the more you are not um, attached to this world, the more they're going to see this beauty and they're going to just want it and they're going to be very attracted to you. So you're going to have to really understand and it won't matter what your weight is. And to you, it won't matter. You over there, um, you the drunk, it won't matter how much you drink. It won't matter because you are like this warrior spirit within that wants to fight. It's gotten beaten down and you feel bad about the drinking. I, I understand. I see a lot of our brethren lined up at the bar. I see a lot of our brethren, you know, feeling horrible about, you know, the things they've said or done. I see a lot of our brethren eternally beating themselves up, you know, the men. And all I can say is that you exist almost like an angelic warrior in, in the spirit. And the more you focus on Jesus, the more that spiritual self of yours will come through. I just wouldn't worry about the drinking and I wouldn't worry about the, the stoning and I wouldn't worry about the, you know, the escape mechanism. I wouldn't worry about the lust because believe me, uh, you younger men, um, you're in for a real treat as uh, you start heading past 55, as I am. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your focus becomes much more spiritualized as you go. And uh, I'm not one of these people that would want to um, indulge in Viagra, you know, necessarily. Uh, you know, um, you know, I, I, I suppose... Um, I'm more wanting to embrace the natural progression of life, you know, as it goes. And, you know, when I was younger, I had um, lots of lust. And that lust always went in circles. It never served me at all. It never, it never, you know, f when those few times it was fulfilled, I wasn't really, you know, I was more an intellectual kind of person, not so much running around after my, you know, chasing my dick. You know, I wasn't really... Um, letting the little head have its way. I was more of an intellectual. So my relationships were all weird, you know. <laughs> yeah, I remember my, my uh, you know, when I was 16, and I remember I had a party at my house. I'm sorry, I lost my virginity. And, you know, some guy, these guys set me up to it. And, when that happened, you know, I was like in the club. I was like a real man, you know. But I remember how it was. And uh, and there was like, you know, my parents were gone. I had people over. And I remember, you know, it happened. It was very brief. And uh, I remember a few other times where, you know, I could see how people, you know, if you're really physical, you could worship this whole thing of sex, you know, of... Uh, yeah, I remember the way it felt. I remember that particular night, even right now. And, um, but it didn't really, there was no follow through. In other words, I didn't really com continue to embrace the flesh. Like, uh, it, it became an abstraction to me even after that. But I had my moments, you know, I had my moments of, <clears throat> of, uh, using my anatomy. And, um, Although, like I say, I was, you know, it wasn't really my main focus uh, it, it, because, uh, I don't know, I was interrupted in that way. You know what I mean? I, I had issues because of childhood issues and whatnot. I, you know, there were times I just didn't want anyone to see my nakedness or I didn't want anyone to touch me, you know, and I didn't understand that. But then I realized it was from trauma from, you know, childhood. So I, I was, it was twisted in that way, you know, and then that ended up being 
my saving grace. It ended up being the thing that kept me out of all that garbage, you know, keeping me out of <clears throat> the losing, failing, second death world system was the, the, the abuse itself became a gift. And, um, You know, the only answer I got about abuse back then was, you know, adults would tell me, well, everybody gets abused, so just enjoy it. So I was like, okay. You know, I mean, it was at the school. It was at the, you know, it was, it was just pervasive. Pedophilia was very pervasive, you know, back then. So you tend to cover yourself up, to clothe yourself, to keep yourself from being tired. And then it wrecks your relationships with, with women because you don't want them to touch you. You know, you, you get to that point. And then finally you do, but then it's weird and then it doesn't really work and then it's intellectually upsetting and, you know, and then you realize later that, yeah, a piece of you went with it, you know, you went down the tubes with that. So it, you know, it, uh, but then the world says, well, if you don't embrace that, then we're going to reject you and make you some kind of loser, you know, because we all have to be the same, you know, we all have to be, you know, the same lust, the same this, the same that. So we all have to, you know, kind of do it together. It's like, excuse me, but um, I'm an individual. Oh, no, well, then you'll be hated by the world if you want to say you're an individual. And, you know, it's like, and then they get to, to the point of, as they go up, you know, it's it's my throat, your eyes, my, you know, your talent, this, you know, and they steal each other's talents. And then eventually they start running guns and drugs. And the next thing you know, they're... Um, they're the drug dealer, the honchos. They're they're then they move up and they're running the software industries and they're running the military and they're running the nations and they're you know you know these this group. God hates them. I I I'm sorry. He hates them. He absolutely hates them. When they say they're praying, we all know they're not praying to 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 God. Those of you who, in other words, who have suffered for your flesh suffered because you couldn't relate to it suffered because you didn't ever really feel like you fit in or you didn't really fit in with yourself or you didn't really fit in in any way shape or form here those of you who were made ostracized and made to feel like carrie in the movie and and the book the stephen king book carrie you know made to feel like you were set up in a game and laughed at and and and, and mocked and and, and and teased and tortured and lied to and and uh, you know just used as the brunt of their jokes and then later you got used for your energy your soul your talents got stolen those of you who've been really hurt the Lord loves you all the more and He's going to make it not only right with you He is going to um, show you He loves you even now because He's going to heal you and raise you up and you're going to walk over these scorpions and snakes, and that's all they are. They're not human beings anymore. You have to stop seeing just if they have two arms and two legs and a head and some hair and a, and a suit of clothes on. You have to stop seeing, you have to start seeing in the spirit. Is that a real person? Is that a hologram? Is that a demon in human flesh or is that for real? You have to start seeing that things are porous. They're not solid like you think. An hour of prophesying. I think this is the thing where I can serve you the best because then I just, I can minister to people because the Lord tells me who to minister to and then he's happy with me and, and then you're talking to him and everything's hooked up and then we're all okay. Like right now, we're all all right. We're okay in Jesus' name. I pray you're healing in Jesus' name. Healing doesn't mean what you think it does though. In Jesus' name, healing means anointing. Healing means insight. Healing means another paradigm. Healing means another dimension. Healing means another consciousness, a bigger perspective. In Jesus' name, I pray for your peace right now. Zeph Daniel, the Zeph Daniel version, not perversion, version, good version. <laughs> I think you'll find over time, unfor you know, fortunately or unfortunately, I tend to be right about the things I say. It gets borne out over time. Yeah, you know, a lot of people may disagree, and then over time they say, you know, I hate to admit it, but you're right, and damn it, I wish you were wrong. And I, I do too. You know, I do too. I love you. I'm praying for you, and I will see you next time.